Amen. Oh my God. Thank God. Finally, I'm able to be here. Oh my God. Yesterday night, I thought I was going to do it till 6 a.m., but I became sick the last podcast. You know, I complained at the beginning that I was having some pains on my neck and I didn't know where it was coming from. So it wasn't by the time I was ending the video. I mean, by the time I was ending the last podcast and I couldn't do another one, I knew that that was a signal that my body was weak, so I had to go to bed. Even though I didn't sleep immediately, but I was battling with serious headache. Even when I woke up in the morning, I was battling with headache. I couldn't do my uh, online prayers. I could only do some personal prayers. I was just praying, God, touch me. God, heal me. So this, like a few minutes ago, it's over and half now, but... Not like two hours, three hours. I don't think it's up to that. Like not so long. I think around 10 or so. And we are in few minutes to 12 now. Like around past 10. Something like that. That's how the head just vanished. I'm like, God, thank you. You are finally strengthening me to come for podcast. God, I'm so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. And I really try during the day not to get myself distracted with watching some movies that because God told me that you are not just to be watching how people are manifesting their glory. It's time for you to be manifesting your glory too. So I tried as much as possible not to go too deep deep into any movies. I was just watching them small. Like I was not going deep into anything. (laughs) So there was there were a lot that I would just watch little part of it and remove it. So that I don't get too engrossed. I was not watching any movie from beginning to the end. I was just maybe a few parts of it. So, so that I can gain back my strength. And I was praying at the same time. God strengthened me. So I'm already at that stage in my life. Where I have to manifest my glory. According to what God told me. So it's no longer just watching how people are manifesting their glory alone. So I really thank God for this. May the name of our God be praised. And these are the things we keep teaching ourselves on this podcast. That God has plans for our lives. It is those things we pass through before we get to where God is taking us to that, that will become our testimony by the time we get there. So we shouldn't just um, ignore them or try to look for shortcuts. Let's wait on the Lord. Because that is what God wants to use. So I believe that as I'm saying it over and over again, God will use it to talk to people. So let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for healing. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace to come back again. Thank you, Lord. You are not reporting death. Thank you, Jesus. It's not that you are sinful. And she still did podcast yesterday. Father, I thank you for the healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Most High God. Thank you, Lord. Ah, you are great. Yes, you are. Holy one, you walked upon the sea. You raised the dead. You reign in majesty. Mighty God, everything written about you is great. Father, we worship you. Father, we bless your name. Eternal rock of ages, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for a time like this. Thank you, Lord, for the greater things you are going to do in this podcast. With this podcast, with this ministry, with this ministration, Father, I'm so grateful. Thank you, Jesus, because you are wonderful. Thank you, Jesus, because you are great. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Lord. Father, I bless your name. Father, I appreciate you. Thank you for my life. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Eternal Rock of Ages. Please accept my praises. Accept my thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the word of God that has always come out. The undiluted word of God that has always come out or gone out to help us, to lead us aright so that we don't make mistakes, so that we don't fall into the trap that is taking people away from the Lord. Father, we appreciate you. We thank you, Lord, for as many that you still want to teach us again today. Father, Lord, we are ready. We are hoping. Please teach us. Father, open our understanding. Give us the wisdom of God. Father, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. And refill me. Father, as 
as you are using some part of the Holy Spirit in me, please refill me. Don't let me become empty. Have mercy on me. Father, Lord, please use me for your glory. Father, I'm available for you. Please use me for your glory. In the name of Jesus. King of glory, take charge. Take all the glory. Let your name be exalted. Father, the lifting, the rising that you have promised. Father, I'm waiting, I'm expressing. Father, please come and do it in the name of Jesus. Remove every hindrances, every power of darkness that is saying no to my progress. Father, let the power of God subdue them in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, come and have your way. Jesus Christ, come and take control. Take charge in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, as we come before you this evening, we want to hear from you. Father, prepare our hearts. Father, Lord, use me as your vessel too. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Father, put your words in my mouth. Let all the glory return to you. At the end, we want you to take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. <sighs> you know, I was really trying to connect in that prayers, but eventually I had to end the prayers. Because it was getting too long, too long, too long, so... We thank God that God has brought us again. So the topic for now is your marriage and your destiny. You know, I told you that it's like saying the same thing in seven different topics. So this is another topic that is like we have been discussing it since we started this seven, seven series for this new series. So how do I put the English? You know, the first one was about, uh, like, the same thing. Body count, should relations start with sex and all that. So this time around, is marriage, marriage, marriage in seven places. I think I got the inspiration for all these topics when I was listening to... Uh, some were talking about kingdom marriage and some were talking about divorce. That divorce testimonies or story or whatever. So these were the things that God put on my mind during those videos. Uh, during the time I was watching those videos, the things that God made me to learn and things that God wants me to talk about. So there are like seven, and we're going to end this with two prayers, two sessions of prayers. So, but this time around, we want to learn your marriage and your destiny. If you remember, or if you are conversant, please, is there in English like that? <laughs> Let me speak small vocabulary. If you are coming with us or you are you are someone that takes notice of things. You will notice that we have talked about it many times. That the purpose of God for marriage is for our destiny. There are a lot of reasons why people get married. You know? And I'm going to be referring to some of those things I heard in those videos. Excuse me, I'm sorry. That was my 12 o'clock alarm. So today I'm not, I'm I'm not uh, distracted with food and everything. So I've I've completed all that before 12 a.m. So we thank God. So we are fully ready. So like I was saying, I'm going to be referring to some of those things. You know, it's like God wants us to learn from the mistakes of others, so that we don't go into it. Because that is the best way to learn in life. It's not for you to. Go into the same mistakes, fall into the same traps, then before you learn. It's really not, <laughs> it's not wise. If you have to uh, learn from your own mistakes, it's not good. So it's like the Holy Spirit is teaching us so that we don't fall into those traps before we, we learn. You know, that was what... Solomon was seen in most of his teachings in uh, Proverbs that my son, listen to my word. Though. <laughs> I also, I listen to the instructions of my mother. You understand? Because nowadays, a lot of children will think, oh, I'm wiser than my mom. Oh, she doesn't know how to do it. Like some youth will be like, and that was in the olden days. But I'm telling you, the same thing that happened in the olden days is still happening now. It's all that it's happening in a new dimension. Maybe the clothes are different. Maybe the fashion is different. Maybe those things that they are doing is different. Look at uh, gayism and lesbianism that we have today. 
In Sodom and Gomorrah time, it was there. And I'm sure that even in Noah time too, there will be something like that too. Because God destroyed the world in Noah's time. I'm sure it will be one of the sins. So, what are you now trying to say? So, it's always the same thing. So, it's better to learn from elders. It's better to learn with the Holy Spirit. It's better to learn with godly wisdom like this. Because this is like we are learning with godly wisdom and Holy Spirit. You know what we mean by godly wisdom? That uh, those things that God has instructed us to do. If you remember the word of God, I always quote, the, the wisdom of God is the beginning. <laughs> the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So that's what I mean by godly wisdom. Like those things that if you do them, it will make you wise. You're not going to be falling into some kind of traps that will lead you into destruction and then later on. Because I'm telling you, everything that the devil will make you to do is not wise. But the devil will make it look to you at that time like you are wise. But I'm telling you, brethren, it's not wise. It's not wise. It's only when you take the godly wisdom. From the start, it may look like you are the foolish one. Uh, nobody reckons with you. So many things like that. But God is on your side. I'm telling you, that is that is the standard of God. So we want to learn with godly wisdom, like I said. I just explained what godly wisdom means. So we're going to be referring to some of those things that I learned or that I heard. Not that I learned. I didn't learn from them. I only heard them with the godly wisdom. I see where their mistakes lie and then we want to discuss it. So today we want to discuss your marriage and your destiny. I'll start by saying that <clears throat> a lot of people get married for wrong reasons. Some they might be like uh, because they were they were high school sweethearts. Because I remember one of them mentioned a story like that. Not even one, like two or few of them. Let me just say few of them because I can't remember the number now. But I remember a particular guy said it that they were so close in childhood then another guess she said something like that like from my school then they moved in together you know a lot of people think relationship is about attraction do i like your looks do i like your how you look do i like um your vibe do i like the kind of friends you move with do i like your charisma or something i don't know whatever they think just like one of the examples I used yesterday that the guy said he liked the height of the lady, you know. Those are the reasons. <laughs> those are the reasons that people go into marriage for. And after a while, the eyes will change. The looks will change. The body will change. You understand? Then you know, be like, I, this is not the person I got married to. You know? Like one of the guys that was testifying about his divorce story. Should I call it testify now? <laughs> I was talking about his divorce story. He said uh, they were like high school sweetheart and the best of uh, lover or whatever, English. And then they got married then. She started seeing somebody else. You understand? Maybe what has kept them all this long till they got married, maybe it was the highest. Maybe it was the body physique, like a lot of guys nowadays. They like it when the girl has... Is it bosh, they call it? Like, has added another part of another body to her own body. You understand? Like, maybe to make the... <laughs> to make the buttocks fat or the hips wide or something like that. A lot of guys like it. And... Uh, <laughs> You see, I, I watched a video today. Sorry to divert. Because if I don't say it, it will not leave my heart. I watched a video today. The lady was saying a lot of women are in hellfire because they have a lot of things that are attaching to their body. And I went to comment there. And they said a lot of men are going to heaven. And I went to comment there that why would somebody that is making a woman to sin go to heaven why the woman will go to hell because a lot of women are doing these things to get these men attracted to them why will a man that is attracted to this kind of things go to heaven why the woman that did it just to please this man will go to hell 
I, I said there should be judgment for those type of men too. Because these women are actually, you see, you see a godly lady doing the things of God, doing all the standard of the gospel. She will not have husband. But that one that is flying around, different women and different men are sleeping with her, uses a different attachment. I'm talking about my childhood church now. Different attachment, makeups, and all sorts of things. Like that. It's the one that they will be getting married to. That one that keeps her body, that protects her body, that does everything. She will not have suitors. But yes, now I want to tell me that the one that, that the person that is leading those women to sin, she it will go to hell. But that one that, that they are leading to sin will go to hell. You know, there should be a judgment for that. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that maybe in the case of that particular guy, or maybe some cases like that, where they got married and then the whole thing now come out like, oh, I didn't check this behavior. I didn't check that she's always out there hanging out around with other boys, something like that. So after the marriage, she started uh, chatting with other men. And uh, he later found out that she has been cheating on him, stuff like that. You know, these are the things you should have put in consideration. For me, these are the things I put in consideration. And that's why a lot of guys can't meet up with my standard. It's not that it's my standard is too high. But by the time I meet you and I'm trying to find out how our destiny can match, not just the physical, not just the looks. Today, I can dress fitted. Tomorrow, I can wear something else. So if you are the type that you get attracted to how my body looks, you are missing things up. I've been posting some pictures on my Facebook for a while now. I know that people comment when I'm wearing some kind of dresses. Yesterday, I <laughs> it was rainy. I just dressed in a very casual way. I don't think anybody commented. <laughs> you understand? And I'm like, these people are just physical people. But that's me. Today, I can't. I can. It's still me. You need to get close to me to really know who I am. You understand? I don't, I don't really feel comfortable with people that... Uh, Give you all know according to how you are dressed. Somebody might not have a lot of money, but have the future. The person has goals. He knows what he has. He has the potentials for greatness. You understand? And what are you supposed to do? You are supposed to get close to see the potentials to bring out the potential. Clothes is just clothes. Anybody can wear anything. I can decide to wear something smart on me today and tomorrow i'm wearing oversized clothes it doesn't mean that i stop being myself by the time i'm wearing oversized clothes you don't have to judge me based on what i'm wearing try to get close to me try to know what i speak out of my heart of my mouth you understand so maybe those kind of guys i'm I'm trying to let us know those things that that caused some divorce so that we we can know how not to go into such mistakes you see, I am a mom, we were just talking a few minutes ago, and uh, she told me of a man of God, I just retired, and my my comment was, oh, this man married his wife, like his real wife, because this woman stayed with him through all going to different ministrations, different places to go and become pastor and overseer, and now they both retired together, and my comment was, this man married his wife. You see, what what does marrying your wife means? It means the person that you are going on this journey with is someone that at every point in time you are ready to move, she's ready to move with you too. You understand? Every time, like as she's as you are growing, she's growing with you. Because it's very hard when you want to move forward and your partner wants to stay on the same spot. Or when you want to move forward, your partner wants to move backwards. It's very hard. It's not always easy like that. But what makes a journey easy is when you are moving forward, the woman is moving forward with you. I remember when they were not uh, into full-time ministry, when they were doing uh, some kind of businesses. The wife and the man, they were doing it together. It was, it was a joint business and that's why 
the homes was standing. The home has been standing. Until today, by the grace of God, they both retired together in the ministry of, of the work of God. You understand? So what am I trying to say? That many of these people that make mistakes of, oh, I later found out that uh, this thing, that thing happened, then we couldn't move on again. Many of them were going into the marriage for wrong reasons. They were not checking the growth, the journey of this person. So don't rush. When you meet someone, no matter how the man wants to rush you, calm yourself down. Let the man calm down. The mistake ladies make is when a guy is always, um, I want to see you right now. I really love you. I really want to be with you. Like he's so restless about it. They think, oh, it's, it's love. <laughs> Me, I've had a lot of experiences like that. And I know that it is not love. <laughs> It's not love. These things are not love. Don't be fooled to think it is love. When a man is just always wanting to see you, I can't stop thinking about you right now. You are just the one on my mind. A lot of guys have said it to me many times with that number. And it's not love. So if all of them are saying it to me like that, and they're still saying it to this, to other girls, anytime they see another girl. So are you trying to tell me that it's, it's, it is love that is making them to say things like that to every girl that they see around a man that is pursuing you or that is trying to come after you by force, by force, most of the time he, he just wants to calm himself down. The testosterone in him is the one pushing him. A guy can actually, <laughs> the guy that I said came to visit me while I was having, he came all that way, did everything that I would want my future husband to do. He was cooking with me, he was cleaning. Helping in our stores like it was a perfect relationship. We were going out to the market together, doing everything together. It was it was too perfect. Only for him to get back to his station and said he never loved me. You know, that is to tell you how much guys can actually go just to get a, a lady laid. Like just to get a lady to sleep with them. They can go as as length as possible, as long as possible. Like one of the experiences I was talking about. Like the guy bought me a few things and then he was thinking I was going to be like, okay, I've never seen these things before. So the next thing I should do now is for you to sleep with me. And I was looking at him like, what? When he saw I didn't have those kind of mind and he was looking at me like, like I'm strange, something like that. You understand? Guys can actually go that far just to try to get your get you into wanting to sleep with them. So it's not a criteria. And it's very wrong for you as a guy if you just want to get a lady's attention. Although I don't know about other ladies, but for me, with the way God has built me, I am no longer in that category that or have never been in that category of a woman that would just want a man to to just do some things for me temporarily to get my attention. I'm not that type of person. If you want to get my attention, get my attention in a permanent way. If you're just trying to get my attention with flimsy things that that you are forcing yourself to do presently and it's not going to last, you won't get the attention. I will not give it to you. You won't see it. You just do everything you want to do and then you pack a load and go back to your house. You understand? Because God has built me in such a way. And that's, those are the things I'm trying to teach us. I'm t- trying to teach us from what God has taught me. That we should not be looking out for those things. Oh, see, see the flowers that he bought. After you bought this flower, what advantage has it done to you? Okay, the man has car. What advantage has it done to you? Don't you have people that... That is why you see a lot of girls that are being duped into a man that has car. Thinking, oh, this man has money. Whereas the man just borrowed the car. They go to a man's house because they are the physical ones that just were, okay, I want the man that has us, I want the man that has. You don't even take time to know the potentials of this man. You understand? What is he capable of doing later? What is his goals? What is his ambitions? You want to live your life based on lies. You understand? And that's why a lot of you guys that you are just after the physical looks alone. Just the makeup. You understand? And now they are saying that these women are going to hell for the makeup. But the men that they, 
that the girls are doing this makeup for, they are going to heaven. You know, I see partiality there. Maybe another person will see another vision about it. Because why would, why would you be attracted to a lady because she has makeup? And then the lady will go to hell. Then you that you are attracted to her because she has makeup, you will go to heaven. Help me to judge this thing, my brethren in the Lord. Maybe somebody can comment. Because me, I'm confused. I can't even lie. You understand? So if you are the type that you are just based on on the looks alone, on okay, you ask her, you, are, you don't take your time to know. You don't take your time to ask questions. You just want, okay, see how they decorated the place for the... Some things may not, may not be elaborate, but if it's from a true heart, if it's from a heart that cares, it's, it's better than just the elaborate things alone. Some people, some girls, or let me say, most of the February 14th Valentine's Day celebration, everything they do is just to get this woman laid at the end of the day. They do all sorts of things. They they buy a lot of things. They take them out. They do everything. But the goal after that day and uh, after the end of the day is so that this woman can just sleep with them. Sleep with that particular guy. These are not the reasons for marriage. These are not the reasons for relationship. Don't judge your relationship. Don't don't make yourself that kind of person. And you know the worst thing is that after a while, after these guys have been able to sleep with these women, then later on they, they know the right thing. Then they start insulting the woman for accepting them when they were buying them gifts and everything like that. That is the reason why if you as a lady, you already know the truth, stand on the truth. Don't allow any man to change it for you. Because when he changes for you, when he changes it for you and you follow his precepts, Later on, his wisdom will come back to his head. Then he will insult you for allowing him to do it to you. You know, I don't like that thing in men. For not taking responsibilities, for being the one that lured a woman into doing something wrong. But always wanting to, to blame this woman for saying yes to them. It's not, it's not good. It's not how to be a man. It's not right. You understand? So what are we trying to say in this podcast or this topic is that when it is marriage or relationship, don't base it on who oh, he buys me a lot of gifts, who oh, is always after me, who oh, is always sending messages to me. I remember, <laughs> oh my God, I've had a lot of experiences that I remember one time, guy sent me like 75 messages just to say that he loves me. Then I woke up in the morning and it was disgusting to me. This is a guy that doesn't like when I post I post on online and I'm the type that God has ministry for me. So if if I we get and he was asking me, so if we get married, this is how you will be posting things online. And I'm like, first of all, we cannot even we are not even compatible. I mean I'm I'm um what is this temperament? Uh uh this temperament that is outspoken, outspoken temperament. You understand? I want to say things. I want to express myself. That is my kind of person. You understand? I can't remember what they call this temperament. Oh my God, I can't even remember all of them. I know we have melancholy. We have... Hmm. I can't remember, Jerry. <laughs> but I shall know that there is one that always wants to uh, be outspoken, always wants... To... Like you always notice them everywhere they get to, so that's me. And then you you now come into my WhatsApp to come and write seventy five messages very early in the morning. It doesn't move me. I'm not moved by stuff like this. Well, it's not as if I'm not a lady, because some people will be like, "Are you not a lady? Are you not supposed to be attracted to things that are? Are you not supposed to be attracted to flowers? Are you not supposed to be attracted?" I'm a lady, fine, but I'm I'm also a lady with wisdom. So, I'm a lady with wisdom. So, those two things, beauty with brains. Because you men, if a lady just stays with those things you are suggesting to her without putting brains into it, you will still insult the lady for not putting brains into it. Whereas the lady is just trying to submit to you, like the Bible says. The Bible says, submit to your husband. It means many times 
You even put down your own wisdom somewhere to submit to whatever is saying to you. So if a lady is doing that to you, she's already doing those things that will make you have a say. Someone like me now, with the way I always put wisdom in everything, before you can convince me as a guy, it takes a lot of time. That's why I always I always be the one to have convinced myself about you before you talk to me. Because if you are just coming to me, you want to talk me into into believing what you are saying, you won't succeed. Because there's a part of me that will just always cancel everything you say. It will just cancel. So until maybe the Holy Spirit has talked to me before you came, or me, myself, I have prayed about you, then you now come, you now talk. As when whatever you are saying, I will now hear it. You understand? So that's what the Bible was saying when submitting to your husband. So a lady that is already believing you, you tell the lady, don't worry, you are not going to get pregnant. She believes you. She has already submitted. She has already... So when... It... And it's not as if ladies are not wise. They are wise. Ladies are very, very wise. But, you know, there's not everybody that has this strong heart like me. They'll be like, okay, what if I don't submit to him? Maybe I'll never have a husband. But for me... <laughs> I don't care. You understand? Because I, I have learned from different people. I learned from elders. Right from when I've been young. That's when I've had all this wisdom. And how did I get it? I got it from talking to her. I didn't have friends while I was growing up. I didn't have friends among my mates. Because I remember then, I don't even know where the first place I heard it. They said, maybe it was in the, in the secondary school. They said, your friends will lead you wrongly. You know, as a teenager then, they will tell you, oh, there's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing. Listen to elders. So from there, I have learned that I should take the advice of elders instead of advice of younger ones. So I didn't have friends among the younger ones. I was always listening to elders. And they taught me from their experiences. So I've always been this wise girl from childhood, from as, as far back as then. So there was no way any man was coming close to me to deceive me with... I love you, I, I can die because of you. <laughs> there was no way any man was coming to me with, don't worry, one time sex will not, will not take your virginity away. You know, those are the stupid, stupid lies they are lying to girls today. The wisdom of God has already been there with the wisdom that hell has taught me. So what am I still trying to say? I'm trying to say that you should not look out for the physical things. You should check the destiny. You should not look out for those things. And if a lady is already believing you accepting your gifts accepting those things taking it you send a message maybe it's even one i love you and then she believes you she's already submitting to you she's already doing those things that god is saying so watch out for those for the destiny don't just uh be all about the physical okay he has money okay he dresses nice who is he like many of the guys that I've met in the past that are from rich homes and uh, influential parents, I want to know whom you are. Not just your parents. Okay, I know your parents. I know your dad. I know your family. But what about you? Do you have goals? Your dad had goals. That is why he can get to where he is now. What about you? Do you have goals, dreams to become somebody great in life? So these are the things we should look out for. Because after a while, the family uh, glory or whatever will no longer be relevant in your marriage. It will no longer be relevant in your journey. A marriage is a journey. You need to go into the marriage with as a journey because you will be going together. And if you as a woman, you don't have the goal of, of um, anything you want to do. You just want to be handbag of man. God bless you. If that is your own dreams, you understand. Like, okay, whatever it does, I will do. You don't have any plan for your own life. God bless you for that. And maybe that is what you planned for yourself to do. Some women too that didn't have anything they wanted to do with their life. Just whatever the man does, she will do. You understand? If that is your plan, God bless you for that. But what I'm trying to say is that check out for the destiny. Check out for the goals of this man. You know, I use the example of Pastor Deboe and his wife. I said, this woman has stayed with him all these years because probably when she was younger, she has always known. She
she will be uh, the wife of a pastor. If she had other goals and then she had to force herself into this kind of ministry, it would be hard for her. Maybe at the point in time you just said that uh, we would have heard that and she went into her, her childhood dreams, childhood ambitions. So check out for these things. Don't just judge people based on the physical. Don't just judge a man based on how he's coming after you. A man can actually come after you and once he gets you, he will tell you that he has already gotten you. So there's no need to try to do all those things. And I see this kind of behavior as lies. So nobody should even try to come close to me with those kind of things, trying to get my attention with f- material things. I don't, I don't look at those things. I look out for more standard things. So may God help us. We are going to end it now and um, we, we will discuss more in other topics coming up now. Thank you. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this podcast. Brother, be your name. Most high God, I appreciate you. Thank you for teaching us. Father, the word of God has gone on. Father, Lord, let it do what you have sent us to do. Oh God, please be filled with the Holy Spirit. Give me physical strength. Give me spiritual strength. Father, we still have more topics. Father, teach us. Have your way. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Bye.